Ooh. Hello, everybody. Let's start over. All right. Good morning, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Look at me. Unshaven and shaggy. I'm ready here now to show you something. Look, I have been looking at all these, these crazy, these crazy different pens, right? These crazy fountain pens, like hundreds of dollars, and it's all very far-fetched, right? I have lots of ones. These, all right, lots of these ones I have here are very reasonable, um, like uh, these Lamy Safaris, the Koweko, Koweko Sport, however you say it, um, the Ahab Noodler, the Twisby Eco I lost. These are all great starter pens, you know, $20, $30. But something I want to show you here today is this. Someone, this is the Pirate, Pirate? Pilot Metropolitan Fountain Pen. And uh, it's like $15 or something real cheap on Amazon. We're gonna see if this is really a great place to start if you only have a couple or 15 bucks to spend on a fountain pen. Let's see how it works. All right, I've never used this before. I'm popping it right open. It comes with a cartridge, which is a downside for me. I like pistons. Just because I don't like having to reef you know, rebuy cartridges all the time whenever I use this up. I like just, I like just being able to have like a, a bottle of ink and then I can just like refill the pen. But let's pop this cartridge in here. Okay, the tip looks really nice. It's got a bit of a, a ballpoint nib there. It has a good weight to it too. I think this pen feels heavier than much of my much cheaper pens, I mean much more expensive pens. Oh, it does have a, f a f refillable inkwell here. Look at this. I think I can squeeze this, stick this in the ink inkwell, and then let go and it'll fill up, right? So let's try that now. I'm a brave boy, so I'm gonna do this right over my sketchbook. Stick it in, squeeze. Release, it should be filling up with ink now. Give it a few seconds, I guess, to kind of suck it all up in there. I think that worked. Should I be able to tell if it feels heavier or not? I don't know. So Pilot Metropolitan, sounds fancy. Clean that up. Look at that, it's already Already drawing lines on the paper towel. Very satisfying. Very satisfying. Oh yeah. All right, then I'm gonna put the back of the pen back on here. Threads right in. And then this is what it looks like closed one more time. I don't know why I'm showing you this, so I'm not gonna, does it? All right, the cap fits on the back good. And then, uh, I don't know what you guys think. Start drawing. And let's see how the first line goes. Da -da 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 -da. Oh. It feels great. Look at that. These lines are confident, dark. The ink is just pouring out of there. You could it's even the nib is even a little bit flexible. It is. You can draw fast too, the line, the ink still comes out of there. I don't know what I'm drawing, but it's going well. All right, let's speed it up. So the pen worked very well for the whole drawing. I had no problems with it. I refilled it only at one point when I thought it was getting empty, but I don't know, just cause it was starting to write slightly less well. But I, I don't know, maybe if I had just given it like a slight squeeze on the bladder, which is what it has, not a piston. I have a couple other pens that have these rubber bladders. They work well, you know, some other, look, really all I want 
is, like I said, the ability to refill the pens and not have to use those cartridges. But the nice thing about sending a cartridge with it is that if this is like maybe your first fountain pen and you just bought it, right, and you're new to all this and maybe you don't have a bunch of bottles of ink sitting around, you can hop right in and start writing um, with the cartridge they send you as you set aside the bladder or the piston or whatever instead of having to, you know, instead of getting the pen and then realizing that you don't have any ink and then you have to wait three more days, you know, while that comes. That seems to happen with stuff. Anyway, so that's nice. Um, so the pen worked well. I refilled it once prematurely. Um, there were just a couple times when it seemed to be uh, petering out a little bit, like not writing quite as well, and I would just like shake. I mean, it never like outright stopped writing like I've had problems with before, but it was just like the lines would get a little bit more faint, and I would like tap a little bit or shake it, or I don't know what I did, but it, it just start. It, it would come back to me, right? It came on back to me in nice, bold, full lines for most of the time. Very, It put down the ink in very satisfying ways, and I enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this pen. It's definitely right up there with a bunch of my other pens. I don't really... This is, maybe this is very, very kind of uh, nitpicky. I don't really like the shape of it. Like, where is, where is it? It seems like a lot of fountain pens are this shape. It's like an elongated lozenge shape. You guys know what I mean? When the cap is on it and it's closed, it's like a, a very long ellipsoid oval thing. It's just so boring and vague. Uh, it's a little more interesting when you take off the lid and put the cap on the back. It gets a little more interesting, but when it's closed and it's sitting there, that's just the most boring. It's like how people used to think it, an alien spaceship looked as it was being jumping into hyperspace and being warped and stretched by the you know space time continuum or something. It's just I mean that sounds that's given a lot of credit right there for how how cool it sounds because this is a boring shape. I'm telling you, I'm tired of pens being this shape. I don't I I don't know why I'm complaining about pens being pen shaped, but. I guess I guess that means there's not much else wrong with the pen if I'm complaining about the. How, how oval it is, and round it is. <laughs> um, no, I liked it. It worked well. I drew pictures with it, and that's what you don't want. You just want a pen, right? And then you want the pen itself to fade into the background, and then you want to be able to concentrate on the art itself. You want the, the thing you're using to disappear, and then you can almost seamlessly interact with the art. What gets frustrating is when the pen is starts causing all these problems. If it's scratchy or it doesn't work well, or if it doesn't do exactly what you want because you're not familiar with it. You know, it's a new medium. Maybe like if you're not used to using, you know, it's a you're it's a like for me personally, I'm not used to using brush pens. When I use brush pens, I'm like, well, how do I make a line like this, or how to make a line like that? And then suddenly I'm not I'm not feeling the art like I want to be feeling the art. When I just use like a good old fashioned pen, I'm there and I'm feeling it and I love it. Okay, and I was there with this pen. I liked it. Um, what else was I gonna say? I was gonna say that uh, I don't know. Right now, all I'm, all I'm thinking about is this weird pause I'm making. Let me, let me pick up the pen again. It's yeah, it's heavy. Made in Japan. That's cool. Um, I do like that the pan the the lid cl snaps on instead of twists on. I think every other fountain pen I have the lid twists on, which is probably good for avoiding, um, you know, if there's any accidental leakage, that's probably safer, but oh, this is just, sometimes you just get tired of twisting lids on and off. I would definitely recommend this pen. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be I would feel comfortable recommending this pen for $11 or however much you can get it for from the internet. You know, it could be more or less from from other websites, Amazon or Jet Pens or wherever the heck you can find it, or maybe your local art store, it's probably in that range, right? That, I feel like that's a good amount for a pen that should really last almost forever, because that's the beauty of fountain pens, right? Um, really, it's a nice, firm, um, in, you know, impenetrable metal nib there, and then you just keep pouring ink into the fountain in the back, or is the fountain the front and the, the reservoir is the back, and... I don't know, why is it called a fountain pen? Is it... I don't know. Yeah, 
seems like a good investment, especially, I mean, I don't know, but the problem, one, the one hang up I have with this, I think, is it doesn't, it didn't really feel like a fountain pen. It looks like a fountain pen. And if you press a little bit, it felt like a fountain pen, but really just felt like a regular pen writing like a pen. Uh, like if, like nothing about this felt that special. Does anyone know what I mean? Like, uh, it felt almost the same as writing with, um, like, like a, like maybe like a Pilot G2 or, I mean, those are nice pens and I like them, but I don't know. I'll have to think on that some more. It just, hmm. I think it's a non-issue, whatever I'm thinking of. So go ahead. The, th the thing is, look. I want to recommend this as a good starter fountain pen, but then also you might get, if you, this is your first fountain pen, you might get a certain feeling from found, you know, I don't, I don't I want, I don't want you to take the feeling you get from this and then it, it, assume that all other fountain pens are like this because I, all other fountain pens, I think are actually at least a little bit cooler and even a little bit more satisfying than this. This pen wrote good. There's like other fountain pens write good, but this one didn't, quite have that that x factor you know that je ne sais quoi i don't know what i'm saying but there's something a little bit that that's missing from other fountain pens it's still a good pen it's just not an amazing as far as fountain pen type things okay i'm not even saying anything anymore okay good, goodbye goodbye everybody